When it comes to North Korea, um, is it moving fast? No, but we never thought it would. We knew this was going to be a slow, tough process. Are they wishing or maybe changing their mind on denuclearization? It's possible, but we're not going to change our mind on the sanctions. Uh, well, the, the wheels could be coming off the wagon here. Our, our U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, suggesting that North Korea might be uh, backing out of talks. My next guest saw a lot of this coming. Remember this? Everything points to Kim will want any benefits, but he's probably going to look for any way he can find to not deliver this denuclearization. She saw this in the middle of the faucet excitement of the two leaders getting ready to meet. Claudia Russett joins us right now, the foreign policy fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, uh, joins me right now. Uh, you know, Claudia, it's interesting. A lot of your uh, cynical views then, and I say that with the greatest of respect, were borne out, or so far or could be. What's going on here? Are you, you, weren't, you, you weren't hopeful then. I would imagine you're kind of realizing it now. What is it you, you think the North Koreans are trying to pull? Oh, Neil, they're trying to pull exactly what they've done for decades at this point. Um, it was sadly predictable. Uh, and that is they're buying some time. They actually had Trump talking very tough and in the great game of chicken that's been going on for a long time. It looked as if America was saying we're not going to blink. Uh, so they came to the table and got this summit and so on. And now, of course, they are doing what they do. They are rewriting the terms. They aren't complying. They're sort of making concessions that don't actually uh, amount to giving up their nuclear program. And um, to be fair to President Trump, uh, part of the problem he's got is, the, is what I've been saying for years. It's unfortunately, I think, true. The only real solution is an end to the Kim regime. And the problem is, how do you get there without a conflagration, without another Korean War? Yeah, you did say that before. But I mean, you were convinced that maybe given uh, Kim Jong-un's past history of lying to us, his father's past history of lying to us, his grandfather's history of lying to us, that we probably wouldn't and shouldn't be surprised if he lies to us. Now, President Trump, to his credit, <laughs> yeah. isn't accepting it and is saying, you know, uh, things are off until you're back on. Now, uh, it, it, do you think there should be a timetable here, or does it come down to us realizing that this is just a mistake? This is a generational sort of a lying family that will not and cannot be trusted, period. Yeah, it's a function of the totalitarian system that this family runs. Um, no, they cannot ever be trusted. Their system so what do we do, Claudia? Them. I mean, how do you deal with that? Uh, that's the enormous problem. And the, I, again, what I keep thinking is the mission has to be how do you bring them down? Because that is the only real answer. And then the question becomes, uh, can, to what extent can sanctions help with that? But with the objective not of persuading them to denuclearize, which sanctions I think will not do, uh, but of actually undermining them. And at that stage, um, look, what, what President Trump has done at this point is he's checked the diplomatic box. Every president goes and tries diplomacy because, that's, because America doesn't want a war. So, you know, if he didn't do that, the critique would be, how come he never even tried? All right, he's just tried in spades. The diplomatic box has been roundly checked. So now what? And I think the answer is go back to the days of Reagan with the Soviet Union. There are many differences here, but the bottom line is, we need to look for ways to undermine the North Korean regime, delegitimize it further than it already is. Well, you seem to be uh, saying we're beyond just trying to do what we did with the Soviets or the Russians, uh, trust but verify. Uh, now we can't trust them, so there's no use in trying to verify liars, right? Yeah. Well, what, what I'm thinking, what I have in mind here is actually pushing them to the point where finally the Soviet Union in 1991 collapsed. And hmm. that is high risk. You know, Washington does That's doesn't regime like change, it. too, Claudia. That's a risky gambit. Yeah. Well, no. that's, that's the problem is exactly that regime change is the only real solution to this. And at the same time, it's so, which is very high risk. At the same time, what are the risks of not having regime change? Because what we have right now is a scene where he still has a nuclear arsenal. He's all the signs are, as we've been hearing reported in recent weeks, he's still, Secretary of State Pompeo testified 
to Congress that he's still producing nuclear bomb fuel. We have had reports that he's still working on, on missiles. Uh, Claudia, they had to know that we would know this, right? They had to know yeah. that we have these things called satellites. They had to know that we would have <laughs> yeah. the means by which we could <laughs> check them, right? Yes, of course. They know that. This is, again, this is a game of chicken. Yeah. And what they're betting on is that we aren't actually going to pull the trigger because they have two things. They have South Korea hostage to their guns, which is the hostage racket under which they've developed this whole nuclear program and right. done a great deal of damage in the world. And now they have nuclear weapons as well to add to that. This is a hostage racket, an extortion racket, and actually... Uh, it would be highly beneficial, not just on the Korean Peninsula, but to the rest of the world, to see North Korea's regime collapse. One of the messages that that would bring is nuclear weapons do not guarantee the survival of a tyrannical regime. That would be a really important message to get out at this point. Powerful stuff, Claudia. Thank you very, very much.